repeat the instructions. Uh, please keep your videos on and audio on mute. The participants will be turning on their uh, audio once it's their turn. Uh, please ensure there's no background sound. And I request everyone to be alert. And again, keep their videos on. If on mobile, keep it on the landscape mode. Thank you. Thank you. May we begin, Ajay sir, uh, Dr. Chaudhary ji, may we begin, it's 11.30. Over to anchors. Yes, a very good morning to all of you. We are part and Pranani, class 12, CSKM. We welcome the August gathering. Our distinguished chief guest speaker, Dr. Harish Chaudhary, other dignitaries, teachers, and dear friends. Light symbolizes knowledge, wisdom, and free will. To solemnize the special occasion, I would like to request Chairman Sir and Ma'am Principal to light the lamp for an auspicious beginning to the program. Now, Shivam of class one will recite the invocation shlok in Sanskrit. Namaskar, Mera Nam Shivam hai. Main aaj aapko Guru Pranamant sunane ja raha hu. Guru re Brahma, Guru re Vishnu, Guru re Devo, Maheshwara, Guru re Shakshat Param Brahma, Tasme Sri Guru ve Namaha. Is mantra ka arth hai, Guru ko Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh kaha gaya hai. Guru hume gyan dete hai. गुरु हमारी सारी शंका को दूर करते हैं गुरु हमारे सारे अज्ञान को नष्ट करते हैं इसलिए हमें ऐसे गुरु को साक्षात भगवान के समान प्रणाम करना चाहिए वांछा कतरुभे छे कृपा सिंधु बेये वचा पतिता नाम पावन भ्यो गुरु वैष्णव भ्यो नमो नमः इस मंत्र का अर्थ है मैं आप सभी गुरुजनों को सादर प्रणाम करता हूँ। गुरु उस कत्र भज की भांति हैं, जो सारी इच्छा पूरा करते हैं और पतित जीवों का धार करते हैं। पीटी चिकने धन्यवाद। The light of the world, the beacon in the dark, and the hope that gives us strength to survive is our teacher. Today, we celebrate Teacher's Day, a day set aside to honor the beautiful souls that work tirelessly every single day to ensure that the future for all of us is bright. Let us welcome all the teachers with a huge round of applause and take this magnificent occasion to express good wishes to all our teachers who continue to contribute impeccably in shaping us.
Every year, Dr. Sarvapalli Radha Krishna's birth anniversary is celebrated on September 5th. Teacher's Day is observed in his honor. A great scholar and an excellent teacher, Dr. Radha Krishna was a successful leader as the president of India. Truly, a teacher affects eternity. We can never tell where his influence stops. I quote Henry B. Adams. Let us have a very brief glimpse of our speech. Setting a parameter of excellence. <laughs> Unfolding a new chapter of knowledge. Reaching the zenith of wisdom with the erudite faculty. And a placement that builds the foundation of a lucrative career. Welcome to the hub of education that shape your future. Colonel Satsangi's Kiran Memorial School Transforming Aspirations Now, we have a presentation by our alumnus and IT head, Mr. Ajay Rajhi, on our Founder Chairman Sir. मैं न हारा था न हारा हूँ न हारूँगा कभी अपनी आजादी की वार न मैं वारूँगा कभी Two roads diverged in a wood, and I I took the one less travelled by, and that has made all the difference. I found a chairman, sir. Kal Piyasat Sanghi's journey began from the town of Gorakhpur, Uttar Pradesh. Educationist, a topper of seven university exams and games at high level including Ranji Trophy, Cricket, Services Hockey, State Level Badminton and All India Tennis. He began his career as a teacher in physics and taught at famous colleges in Allahabad and Banaras. He joined the army through Indian Military Academy and was commissioned into the Army Education Corp. Sir married Lady Kiran Man Singh, MA, MA, and Sangeet Prabhakar on 1st January 1960. Gentle and calm, Ma'am Kiran was a perfect companion to the young and dynamic officer Captain Satsangi. His assignment in the army as a principal. Senic School Talaya in 1975 was exceptional in school education. He pioneered the nil failure system based on the educational premise that a child should be taught at his pleasure and not at his peril. So became the first principal of Senic School in the history of India to receive VSM Vishisht Seva Medal. for his distinguished services in the field of education and for the maximum number of cadets qualifying and joining the national defense academy for three consecutive years to fulfill his dream of having his own school sir took premature retirement from the army and left a blaze of glory through his unparalleled contribution to school education he joined the yadavendra public school Chandigarh in 1979 as its founder principal In 1981 he took over as founder principal cum chairman of Rotary Public School Gurgaon He was not known as only the principal heading these schools he was an educationist with ideas and implementation ahead of times He was an institution builder and often said Buildings don't make institutions. He was a dreamer with an unquenched thirst for making every child a winner and this he achieved. On 9th April 1984, this saga of great success 
was interrupted by great personal tragedy of sudden and untimely demise of his soulmate, his beloved wife and constant companion of 25 years. But he gathered courage and decided to build an educational institution in the memory of his very dear wife, Lady Kiran Satsangi. In 1986, Colonel Satsangi's Kiran Memorial School was founded. His education was always child-centric. He emphasized on all-round development of personality of students as well as teachers. Khudi ko kar buland itna, Khudi ko kar buland itna ki har takdeer ke pehle, Khuda bande se khud puche, bata teri raza kya. was one of the couplets he recited to motivate students the most outstanding principle that he followed in education was accepting all students whether weak or meritorious whether naughty or docile he was more than two decades ahead of his time in field of inclusive education a good doctor accepts all kind of cases treats them successfully likewise he accepted all students and lovingly nurtured them to realize their potential about holidays he had a very unique idea like a mother does not take leave from household work and children a student should not take leave from studies or a teacher from their vocation he emphasized on the principle of enjoyment of work workload was renamed work joy by him hence our motto busy be pleasure sir's interaction with teachers was close and affectionate he always discussed their problems and guided them at all times a teacher or a student was welcome to meet him 24/7 Sir wanted children to compete against themselves and excel in life. He believed every child is a winner and has the potential to excel. Believing in the concept of the gifted child and multiple intelligences, he believed in the unique worth of every child. He was a tall figure with sound experience of life. He narrated Urdu couplets and poems, dohas to substantiate his thoughts. His repertory of shair and shairi was amazing. He was very fond of Ghalib and Harivansh Rai Bachchan. Nazar's Khushamad was one of his favorite. On 1st April 2005, our founder chairman sir left for his heavenly abode. We miss him but his legacy of educational philosophy and life principles continue to live and illuminate the lives of many. He used to say my candle burns at both ends it will not last the night but ah my friends and oh my foes it gives heavenly light one of his well recited urdu couplet is main akela hi chala tha janib e manzil magar log aate gaye aur karwan banta gaya we remember our founder by the quote diamonds when they shatter in the stillness of the night they leave behind crystals and moments of light and so his legacy continues with his benediction how wonderful is our alma mater and how inspiring our respected founder chairman sir now to introduce our school and to talk about its various innovative educational techniques i would like to call upon desha from class 3 trishti from class 7 Vansh from class 12, Atul, Ayush, and Chavi from class 11. This strategy found it amazing how we adopted the technology due to special efforts taken by our teachers. I continue my studies in this pandemic. I have learned reading, writing, many activities in my online classes. Initially, it was difficult to sit in front of screen and concentrate. During summer vacation, we We visited virtual zoo. Teacher showed us many science videos, which were interesting. At the same time, we came to an organic farm, celebrating festivals and organizing cultural events. This pandemic taught me lot of new things, but nothing mean like school. Thank you. Our motto is "Busy be pleasure."
We, the students in CSK, are busy bees who derive happiness in the process of problem solving and learn not to be mere facility enjoyers. We learn to perceive problems as challenges and opportunities to excel in life. We strive for excellence and aim for perfection. Here we are taught that for every problem, there is a solution and it is all up to us to find it. Our school philosophy creates winners and achievers based on the value of cooperation and not conflict. We are trained to live rough and tough and build resilience to face life. In a nutshell, problem solving is our creed and we learn to solve problems with grit, tough action, steely resolve and sustained determination. Our learning is based on the principles of self-motivation, self-development, and our focus is always on all-round personality development to realize one's optimum potential. Thank you. I, Bunch, would like to highlight our unique net failure system. We do not fail a child at any level and has been following this system since the inception in 1986. A child has to be taught at his pleasure and not his peril. This philosophy of our founder chairman, Colonel P.H. Satsangi, who sits Seva Medal, is the guiding principle of CSK. Do not fail a child, it's murder, said Colonel Satsangi, who believed in the child and made the child believe in himself or herself. This concept implies that every child deserves a chance to succeed and each child is helped to overcome failure and the fear of failure. Failure has negative impact on measures of social adjustment, self-esteem, behavior, competence, and inspiration for children. CSKM believes that every child can be developed and guided towards success. Creativity and joyful learning blossom forth the sylvan surrounding of CSKM. At CSKM, each child is a winner each time and every time. Thank you. Good morning to one and all present here. Ayadul Sharma is now going to talk about CSKM, a modern Gurukul. Like a Gurukul where students stay with the Guru, the teacher, away from the comforts of home and gain knowledge, values and skills. CSKM is a residential school which provides ideal learning environment for students. We celebrate diversity and have created a culture of courtesy and respect for all. Like an ashram, CSKM provides green and serene surroundings wherein values like empathy and compassion our reinforced and character is built. A confluence of a gurukul and modern infrastructure and amenities, our school is well equipped with the state of the art labs, smart classes, and many more. Students are continuously educated through webinars about cybersecurity, appropriate use of the internet, and not a day was lost during the pandemic, and effective digital learning continued without any flaws. We are therefore grateful to our school and faculty for the way they encourage and nurture us. Aishin, shall we please take over? We, the students in CSKM, follow a unique method of learning that is syndicate learning or group learning. It is a kind of cooperative learning where we learn and grow together. It fosters the spirit of inclusive education and differential level of learning, taking into account the strengths and weaknesses of individual learner. This method is based on cooperative learning and helps in the actualization of the inherent potential of each and every child. By adopting this system, every learner keeps improving his or her personal level of achievement in a cumulative manner. The syndicate learning method optimizes both individual and group learning strategies to bring out the best from each student. The various steps of self-learning are SQ 4R, which means scan, query, read, reflect, recite, and review. Following the self-learning, there is self-reading of a topic, group discussion, development of question bank, open book exam, exchange of copies and correction of work, reference and removal of doubts, closed book exam and correction. Thank you. Basis of methodology, self-learning and team syndicate learning methods combine the best of other teaching learning strategies so as to derive maximum benefit. In terms of learning, despite the limitations of each individual method as follows, lecture method, demonstration method, group discussion, mutual instruction, or team teaching. This method helps us to develop a strong belief that to every problem, there is a solution and it is up to us to find it. A problem solver in life is a problem solver in mathematics and science as well and vice versa. Thank you. Thank you so much for this amazing introduction. 
we feel immense pride and joy in studying in this institution. Moving forward, I would like to invite Rehan and Swati from class 10 to read out the resume of our honorable chief guest, Dr. Harish Chaudhary. Dr. Harish Chaudhary is a professor with the Department of Management Studies, IIT Delhi. He did the schooling from the Doon School, Dharadun, BTEC from IIT Kanpur, PGDM from IIM Bangalore, and PhD from IIT Delhi. He has worked in companies like Dunlop India Limited, NIIT, and RAAG Systems before joining academics with the Department of Management, Management Studies, IIT Delhi. As an outstanding teacher and learner, Dr. Harish Chaudhary has undergone a certification course in TQM, ISO 9000, and is a certified lead assessor by RWTUV Germany. He has also attended a course in ERP conducted by Barn Systems Holland, besides many other training programs. He has taught courses in the area of marketing, such as marketing research, advertising, digital marketing, product management, sales promotion, sales and distribution, etc. Dr. Harish Chaudhary has conducted more than 100 training programs in areas such as expert systems, information technology, behavioral sciences, and technology management. He has been a trainer for organizations like Godfrey Phillips, Network Limited, etc. He has served as a consultant for a number of organizations such as Modi River Limited, Dynamic Fashions, Personal Point, and Plan International. He has carried out a number of sponsored research projects for the Erstwhile Planning Commission of India, National Network, amongst others. He has been a director of board of several companies. He has published over 20 research papers in national and international journals and guided 10 research scholars for their doctoral work. Currently a professor at IIT Delhi, Dr. Harish Chaudhary has organized a number of conferences for school leaders at IIT Delhi and IIT Madras. He has conducted over 100 training programs for school principals and teachers in India and abroad and led delegations of school principals to schools in Australia, Finland, England, Italy and USA. He has conducted numerous researches into school education including a research on assessments effectiveness funded by IBM under their Global Faculty Award Scheme. He has been a part of the organization team of numerous national and international conferences and presented research papers in a number of national and international conferences. Sir, we welcome you. It's truly an honor and a privilege to have Dr. Harish Chaudhary with us here today. I humbly invite our Chief Guest Speaker, Dr. Harish Chaudhary, Professor, Department of Management Studies, IIT Delhi, to deliver the Kern Sasangi Memorial Lecture on Futuristic Perspectives in Learning. Dr. Chaudhary. So can please you unmute yourself. Could you unmute? Thank you, Deepika, ma'am. Good morning. Shakuntala ma'am, teachers, Pranayini and Parth, Shivam, Tisha, Shrishti, Vansh, Atul, Chavi, Ayushi, Rehan. Need I say more? If these are the students you have, I think Colonel Satsangi would be extremely pleased that his vision has been achieved. I had the occasion to meet and interact with Colonel Saab 35 years back when the school foundations were being laid and the first group of teachers was being interviewed. He gave me the honor of being on the selection committee for the first group of teachers who came into the school. Life moves on. He's left a huge legacy behind, and I'm extremely happy and excited that the team has carried the legacy forward and created this Institute of Excellence. These are the children who will shape the future of the country. India is a very fragmented society, and we are very fortunate as a country to have such a significant participation of the non-government private schools. 
because it was in 1931 that Mahatma Gandhi said, quoted in the book by Dharampal, The Beautiful Tree, I challenge any government of a developing country to provide the kind of education that is envisaged for India. And I think the way the private participation has come in, it has done wonders. It is not to say that there is, we must close the divide between the government and the private sector, build trust between all. At the same time, I am what I am today and I believe I'm successful. This is not exactly the time to define success. I know there are a lot of children here who will question what is success. But I am successful and I owe my success entirely and totally to my teachers who taught me in my nursery school, in my middle school, in my college days. I speak good English. I believe I speak good English. My marks suggest that. And this happened because my teacher in class five gave me a book, Treasure Island, in the summer holidays and said, read it and come back and tell me what you have read in the summers. And that changed my life. It changed my life. I'm in touch with her. She is now in Hyderabad, retired, and her daughter is my student. I've had some great teachers, each one of them, who have shaped our lives. Maybe this is a little difficult to understand for the little children, but that is the capital that we as teachers accumulate. At the same time, there's a churn in the education system. It is 11.56 by my watch. I'm going to speak for about 30 minutes and then leave it open to some discussion questions. And I'm going to speak largely to the teachers here I'm seeing the number of participants. I think most of us are teachers. If you go on repeating the same thing over and over again, you can at best get the same results, usually less. So is there a need to change? Is the future going to be different? Yes, we know it's going to be different. Today is not what yesterday was. Once again, since I'm talking largely to teachers and not to get away or go away from the children who are listening to me, probably in the classroom. I grew up with Binaka Geetmal. Amin Siani passed away a few days back. I grew up with a black and white television, which we don't see anywhere. I grew up with a phone, a landline, in which you have to insert your finger and rotate to get the number. I grew up with STD calls where you have to book a call and wait for a few hours for the call to materialize. Now when children come to us for interview in our IIT programs, I sometimes ask them, if you are going to the New Delhi station or the airport to receive your parents and your cell phone battery runs out, what will you do? And believe me, they get foxed. They can't imagine a world without a cell phone. I grew up at a time when we used to say roti kapda makan. And now we are saying internet, WhatsApp, Wi-Fi as the fundamentals of life. Mary Lynch published a global study called the Book of Knowledge about a decade back. And they looked at what are the major changes. They tracked five major changes. Family fragmentation, urbanization and social structures, technology, globalization, and so on. But what they also say is, that if a pilot stopped flying 20 years back, 
and in, a, in an emergency is asked to enter the cabin of a modern aircraft, he would not require, he would not recognize the cockpit. If a heart surgeon stopped performing 20 years back and was asked to walk into the operation theater, chances are he would not recognize it. But schools around the world have often remained the same. I was in Nigeria driving through visiting schools. And in Nigeria, so much like, if I may say, rural India, you can recognize a school building from a distance. This must be a school. At the same time, it is difficult to undo experience. But undo we must. Because 25 years back, we were preparing students for straight jacketed careers. We're preparing students for engineering, for medicine, and we said, this is your life. Or if Bharat Sarkar mein naukari mil gai, toh nirmana praapt kar gai. Uske baad soshin ki aushakta nahi hai. Pension from day one for the next 40 years. Nobody will ask you any questions. It has changed. It has hugely changed. The kind of careers the children are following today are not what they were following 20 years back. And certainly will not be following them 20 years from now. As a matter of fact, what they will bring 20 years from now, we really have very little idea. We don't know what the world will look like. Looking back into history, I sometimes ask children to imagine the world what it was 200 years back when we did not have petrol and electricity. Can you imagine what the world looked like? So difficult. Forecasting is even more difficult. It's not linear. But what we do know is that the advent of technology is going to make a large workforce redundant. We are still debating when and how the driverless cars will make their entry onto the roads, and especially India. And I think the big question that's being debated in the Niti Aayog, when you talk of electric vehicles and driverless cars is, if a driverless car meets an accident, then what is the legal framework and who will be proceeded against? The driver, the car, the software manufacturer provider, the Wi-Fi system, so there's a friend of mine, he's just retired as additional secretary is in charge of the electric vehicle uh, project at Niti IO. And the big question they're asking themselves is, if electric vehicle is caught in a traffic jam for three hours and the battery runs out, how will we handle it? How will the battery be delivered and replaced? So there are questions. At the same time, way back in the 70s, there was a book, uh, Limits to Growth by Club of Rome, which was a group of 72 Nobel laureates who came together to project the future. And they looked at four factors, food production, consumption of non-renewable resources, population and pollution. And they made a very gory picture of what the world is going to be. At end, however, they wrote, and mind you, 72 Nobel laureates. At the end, last chapter they write, however, this will not happen because new technologies will emerge, changes will take place. So this is not gospel truth, but it is an early warning system. Have we progressed? I was at a conference in Dehradun and I am very fond of quoting if I may say, somewhat unpleasant incident. Mr. Das, SM Das, ex-principal of Dune School and grandson of the founder of the school, C.R. Das. Shomi Das is the person I'm talking about and incidentally, his son is now a maths teacher and his grandson is studying in the school. 
he's close to 90 and we were sitting together for breakfast and he said you know harish i'm happy that i'm dying i said i'm sorry sir why are you saying that he said because i cannot answer the questions which my grandchildren ask me they ask me why have you spoiled the face of the earth why did you cut the trees why have you created hatred why were there 57 wars in 40, in 40 years in the middle east why did 9 11 happen what are we doing we owe it to our children to leave a world better than what we inherited. Have we done that? So I'm going to quickly respond to four possible questions when we talk of education in general and school education in particular. Do we need to change? And if yes, why? What is it we need to change? How can we change it? And why us? Why the teaching community? Why not the politicians? Why not the bureaucrats? Why not the engineers? Why not the architects? So let me answer the fourth question first. Why us? Mr. A school is a microcosm of the society. It cannot be very different from the environment around us, even if it's a boarding school. So when I visit Dune School, or I visit St. Lawrence School, Uti, I see the influence of the local community there. And if I may say, why not? And when I say local community, it is the media, it is the social structure. It is the average person in the street. I was at uh, Vizag and they just walked out to the guest house. I was taking some sessions at a beautiful university there called Geetam University, Gandhi Institute of Technology and Management. Wonderful university. And there was this liquor shop outside with a huge crowd. In Delhi, people buy alcohol in bottles. In Vizag, they buy alcohol by the peg in a plastic glass, pour some water in it and drink right there. What is that influence going to be in the children? A very dear professor of uh, colleague in the University of London asked me, I was in UK, what is the fundamental problem with India? And before I knew what, without thinking, I said corruption. And he said, why? And I said, you gave it to us. So I, I, I'm not sure whether that's a diplomatically correct response or not. But when children see corrupt practices, when children see no one killed Jessica when they are told that she was walking and she fell on a bullet and died and we expect them to believe it. A friend of mine told me, stop subscribing to newspaper. It is all bad news. So the media, at a point of time, maybe even 10 years back, we used to have films, Bollywood films, rated as adult and universal. But now, Netflix makes no difference between the two. And pornography has walked into the bedrooms of children. Parents, first generation parents, sometimes feel very excited. Mira bachcha bahut mehnat karta, sari raat computer par laga rehta. They have no idea. We have progressed. India as a country has progressed. I'm categorical about it. We have progressed in the American sense, capitalistic sense of development, economic development. Our GDP has increased. Our per capita income has increased. The number of cars on the road has increased. The quality of life has increased. 
longevity of human life is increased corruption is increased road rage has increased terror has increased in uk a child is told if you are ever in trouble search for a bobby walk up to a policeman and give them your home address in india we often say if you see a policeman hide behind a tree now why i'm saying all this is in this environment it becomes extremely difficult for a school to be different from the society around us at the same time this is the only institution schools and mark my words not colleges schools are the only institution which can change the society it will be a slow process it's a tedious process and i think our last one and a half years have made it more clear to us that the computer is a tool the teacher is the magic as much fact my very dear friend professor rajaram sharma who was director deputy director at ncrt till recently he told me beautifully last week the teacher is the technology how she uses the computer how she uses online is a technology issue the first requirement for a child to learn is to believe and have faith on the teacher as much right like even before that children do not learn from people they do not like you can get attached to your iphone or your laptop and you can feel extremely bad if that gets damaged but it is difficult to love the iphone or the laptop you can love the children children need to be motivated computers don't motivate them it's the teacher who motivates them. at the same time the role of the teacher has already changed and will change significantly as we go along the first change that i look at is the focus of the teachers a few decades back was on teaching and that is why they were called and they still called teachers the focus has shifted to learning and i think that is why shakuntala ma'am titled today's session as futuristic perspectives on learning the teachers are supposed to teach us subjects if you know the subject you can memorize it we were made to memorize state capitals of india we were made to memorize the atomic chart of chemistry now those days are gone google does that better although i am very worried i am trying to design a course for undergraduate students of iit how to use google the problem with google is it has all the right answers and the wrong answers and there's something called the seo by which the wrong answers can jump up to the top at the same time if somebody asks me what is the capital of manipur or nagaland i think the correct answer would be let's google it but learning deep learning happens only and only by thinking and doing and nothing else yes there are subjects which are difficult to do you can't exactly replicate history 
ऑल दो दस्ट मेमरीज आई हैव हिस्ट्री इज द हिस्टोरिकल प्लेस दैट आई सॉ एंड नॉट द बुक्स दैट आई रेड science is a little more experimental but even at that time i had great teachers so my physics teacher mr pitre he took us to the cricket field and asked us to bowl fast and in that bowling he explained to us the laws of physics he explained to us the trajectory motion by hitting the ball with the bat my chemistry teacher he did something fantastic mr gupta we were in class 7 and he wrote on the board alcohol plus aldehyde is equal to salt plus something something and there was this very naughty boy friend of ours he said sir what does alcohol taste like he just walked across to the lab brought a bottle of ethyl alcohol and gave one spoon to this boy and then everybody lined up and 24 of us we had one spoon each it was so bitter and so terrible that for the next 5 years we didn't touch alcohol if this is called alcohol we don't want it and later i came to know that she does it regularly because she knows that this is the effect on children so teaching pedagogies from teaching subjects teachers have to focus on teaching the child sometimes when i ask teachers what's your job what's your role and some teachers reply i teach mathematics i teach english i teach history and i also ask them do you teach the child also who teaches the child you cannot teach english or you cannot teach history or you cannot teach chemistry unless you know the subject you cannot teach the child unless you know the child and that is what differentiates a computer from a teacher can the teacher understand the child can the teacher understand the child's learning preferences you recollect some time back there was a movement called multiple intelligence and i sought a meeting with howard gartner at boston i was in boston at howard business school and his office is walking distance from there and i went up to him i said how do we use multiple intelligence and very beautifully he said i am a psychologist i never said use it keep it at the back of the mind and see whether there are some answers in developing an individualized learning plan sports kandal satsang himself was such a great sports person yes every child is a winner but it's a need of the hour for children to learn how to lose and that's what sports teaches us after a good game of tennis after a good game of football in which you lost you have a party unfortunately the world is getting torn apart children are getting depressed they don't know how to lose we need to build in more sports we need to build a sporting culture in the classroom and we need to move from competition to cooperation just a word on children there's a lot of research now which suggests that from the age of 0 to 6 a child copies tries to copy everything and anything which they see and hear if they see their mother cooking they want to cook the food if they see their mother or father writing they want to write they want to paint they want to water the garden they want to do everything which they see the elders doing 
Therefore, it's extremely important that we as teachers give them cues which are useful. From the age of 6 to 12, children role model. They decide who's a good person and who's not a good person. And believe me, they are very sharp at it. They may not verbalize it, but they know who's a concerned teacher, who's not a concerned teacher, who's a good person, who's not a good person. And then they follow those people, those teachers, whom they see as their role models. And some teachers are here globally. Globally. Same thing happens in Australia and US and England and Finland. Somewhere around the age of 12 or 13, children become naughty. So, we say that the children have become naughty. They don't become naughty. Their brain starts taking shape, they develop and they start questioning. The child who was very disciplined and respectful is now questioning that we have to pay for the pair of the pair, why we have to pay for the film, why we have to pay for the film, and so on. Why do we have to pay for history? Why do we have to pay for it? Why do we have to pay for it? Why do we have and if their questions are not answered, they become rebellious. The teacher has to answer this. Now, the teacher cannot do it without a significant interaction and support from the parent. It's extremely difficult to undo what happens to a child at home in the few hours that the child is in the school or in a boarding school in the few months that the child is in school, in the boarding house. And when they go home, they learn different things. So I was at the school in New York in one of the worst slum counties of New York. We couldn't figure out it's a slum. So we asked them, why is it called a slum? So they told us it's a slum because there are families of only one car. There are families of only one television. The entire family will sit together. There are families who have only two bedrooms and three children and so on. But well, it's considered a slum, a big time slum. And one of the school leaders, one of the ladies with us, she wanted to use the washroom. And I asked the school principal there, a colored lady, a black lady. I said, ma'am, where is the woman's washroom? She said, wait. She called two security guards and asked them to check the washroom. They went in, came back and said, yes, ma'am. And when the lady was using the washroom, a security guard stood outside it. So I asked her, ma'am, why this kind of security? She said, because um, my children come from broken homes. They come from disturbed families. We try our best, but there's still violence in the school. She runs the school from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. It's a day school. The children come in at 7, they have their breakfast, they do their studies, they sleep there, they play there, they do their homework and they go back at 9 and come back at 7 the next day. And she runs the school till months later. And she says, if I allow these children to be at home, they'll become like their parents. They'll become druggists, they'll become thieves, they'll become criminals. And I can't allow that. And then she gave me the bottom line. She said, I have grown up in this environment and I'm determined to change it. What a beautiful statement. I'm determined to change it. So, education, teaching, is not about subjects. Yes, we need marks. We need to clear the CBSC board exams. We need 99.8 or 99.9% .9 marks to get an admission into economics in St. Stephen's. And what a mockery of the system, if I may say so. At the same time, this obsession with marks has to go. We have to move from information to concept to abstraction. 
and use subjects as contexts. So chemistry has to be used as a context, not for chemistry, but for teaching critical thinking. History has to be used as a context for developing longitudinal analysis. Physics has to be taught as a subject, as a context for creativity and innovation. And above all, we need to teach our children how to communicate. Communication is not about English, it's not about Hindi, it's not about body language, it is not about social skills, it is not about emotional intelligence, it is about empathy. Can we make children understand that every communication that you make with every person should leave that person feeling slightly better, slightly happier than what he or she was before? So, we have to teach children how to earn a living, give them some skills, but more important than that, we have to teach them how to live. And I started by saying that I am successful, not because I have amassed wealth, not because I have a big car, not because I have a big house, not because I have a fancy designation, not because I have a big bedroom and wardrobe, but because I'm a very happy and satisfied person. Success is both happiness. We have to teach them how to choose a career. We have to teach them how to find a life partner, how to deal with people with different personalities, how to plan, how to deal with failures and how to handle success. How to understand nature and spirituality. We have to teach them values. And values cannot be taught. Values are caught. The only route to value education is for you to become a value person. And create a partnership with the parents that good parenting will give headaches. I'm quoting my dear friend Shiv Khera. Good parenting will give headaches. Poor parenting will give heartaches. A child is God's opinion that the world must go on. We will come, we will go. Kuch farak nahi padne wala hai ki agar aap Maruti Alto mein travel karte ho ya Mercedes Benz mein karte ho wahi pahunchoge jahan gaadi le jayegi aur Delhi ke sadkon par dono ek hi speed se chalenge As a matter of fact Alto shayad aage nikal jayegi aur parking mein kam kathinai hogi Dr Radha Krishnan when he quit from the presidentship of India I was living in Chennai and the journalist walked up to his house rang the bell he had an appointment for an interview and this was published in India Today. And he asked him, sir, where can we sit? There was a small table, iron table with four plastic chairs. He said, here, this is my drawing room. So he asked him, sir, how many rooms do you have? He says, I have a bedroom at the back. We have two rooms. And he asked him, sir, you lived in a 400 room Rashtrapati Bhavan. How do you live in two room apartment? He said, no, 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 Rashtrapati Bhavan had 400 rooms. I lived in two. How do you live in 400 uh, rooms? You live in your heart. Can we teach children how to be happy? Can we train them to enjoy the joy of giving rather than receiving? Can we take them away from a sense of entitlement to a sense of responsibility? And above all, using technology judiciously.
So I've taken up my 30 minutes. I'm going to stop here and take on any questions, suggestions, comments. Thank you, sir, for your encouraging words, your words of wisdom, uh, and paving the way for us, educators, parents, and students who are listening to unlearn, to rethink, to relearn. And I think the use the hand and the heart and the mind. Uh, before I think anybody uh, raises a hand to ask questions or queries, I request Ma'am Principal Dr. Shakuntla as Chairman to summarize the beautiful lecture and present the gist for the benefit of students, parents, and teachers present here. Ma'am Principal. Thank you, Deepika. Uh, and thank you, sir. I'm really indebted to you for, uh, firstly, your prompt positive response to my invite to deliver the lecture today. And uh, I recently had the opportunity to interact with you in your department with respect to value education also. Uh, that was a very, very uh, wonderful moment because I realized you have a lot to give to all of us and we will continue to keep taking it from you. Sir's lecture today has uh, provided us with a very comprehensive outlook for the new challenges that we are going to face in the future. And truly your enriching thoughts have uplifted our souls beleaguered by our struggles with technology and social distancing. Uh, there has come a time when people are getting really tired of the online education because the learning outcomes are not being truly achieved. So the key takeaways from your very stimulating talk today, uh, I will give it in point-wise fashion that we need to close the divide between the government and the private sector. Uh, instance you said about when the teacher gave you the book Treasure Island to read, and that had a tremendous effect on you. It's difficult to undo experience, but we have to do it. We have to change. There will be no more straight jacketed careers. The advent of technology will make us redundant. We need to live in the present, but we need to change for the future futuristic outlook and we owe it to our children to give them a world better than what we inherited. Schools are the only institutions which will change the society. This is an amazing statement and we will continue to take your guidance for how to do it in the most uh, suitable manner. Children do not learn from people they do not like. They need motivation. Another very important statement, deep learning happens only by learning and doing. Build a sporting culture in the classroom. From competi competition, we have to move to cooperation. Every teacher, the examples that you gave about Mr. Pitre and your chemistry teacher, I think every teacher must do one interesting out of the box activity to make the students remember them, something with an everlasting impact on the personality and the minds of the children. And then success is about happiness. So I remembered a ghazal, a, a Urdu couplet, which sort of summarizes all the thoughts. It is by Bahadur Shah Zafar, and he says, Zafar Admi Usko Najaniega. Zafar Admi Usko Najaniega. Kobo Chahe Kitnabi Femo Zaka. Femo Zaka means famous or well to do or has status. Zafar Admi Usko Najaniega. Kobo Chahe Kitnabi Femo Zaka. Jise Ash me Yade Khodana Rahi. Jise Ash me Yade Khodana Rahi. So I think 
I think this sort of summarizes what we uh, the uh, direction that uh, Dr. Chaudhary is giving to us uh, for you know the future for changing the society as he thinks, and we all know that schools are important organizations which can help to change societies. So with this, I think I have summarized the gist, though it was very difficult, sir. You had so many thoughts and so comprehensive and so apt and so relevant to today's situation. So I think we can ask uh, our audience questions from the audience. We are streaming on the YouTube also. So Ajay uh, Rati, if you can uh, check out the YouTube also for the questions, if they come on the YouTube, you could ask them on behalf of the people there. And in the meantime, uh, questions, could you raise your hand? I saw Mr. Naveen Jha was taking a lot of notes. So I will begin with him. Uh, he's Should I ask of, a question? Yes, please, yes. Sir, my question is, after listening to you, to inquire from you, why has not values believed in by our great men like Dr. Radha Krishnan or Gandhi or other great men went to our students of present time where has our education system failed? And why is it, why we find this kind of failure? Well, I think it's, that's very difficult for me to respond to. At the same time, Bertrand Russell writes, excellent state education will result in decline of the society. Excellent state education will result in decline of the society. And is supported by saying that you make conformists who don't challenge, who don't disagree. All progress in science, all progress in science is due to somebody challenging the existing laws. When you curb dissent, and I hear in some schools, I was in a school in, let me leave out the details, walking down the corridor, and I heard a loud sound of a teacher saying, shut up. I'm just, but you have shut up. thinking And very quickly, children learn how to beat the system. ये हमारे समाज का एक capitalistic flaw भी है, but we haven't found an answer to it. There is nothing to say that the communist structure, the socialist structure, has performed much better. But if I was to trace it in the Indian system, I see three waves of, if I say, value eroded, erosion. The first was in 1961. Uh, the famous, um, I'm forgetting the name. There was a case of a state manager who was asked to deliver 16 lakh rupees to the Prime Minister's office. And the Prime Minister's office denied having received it and there was a CBI inquiry. I'll just give you the name. And it was the first time in the Indian history that the Prime Minister's office was questioned. The second was the Bofors case. From 16 lakhs, we went to 64 crores. The third was the Commonwealth Games, where we started talking of 175,000 crores. This megalomania, this mad race, this absolute misunderstanding of what a healthy society is. I was at Finland, and of course, it's difficult to compare Finland. I keep talking to Manish Ishodia, who has been following Finland regularly. And it began from my first visit there. 
the highest paid employee there is a heart surgeon who can earn 80000 euros a year and the lowest paid is a school teacher who gets 22000 the ratio is 1 is to 4 in india our ratio is 1 is to 1000 and 10000 i was meeting a japanese delegation and they said we are here for two weeks we want to understand india and i said i'm sorry you can't understand india in two weeks you please specify which india you want to understand india 1 india 2 india 3 india 4 we have many indias within india because we are a very fragmented society and i said i believe that 80% of japan is middle class and there was this professor leading this team he got up and got angry he says no professor chaudhary japan is 100% middle class i think somewhere we have lost the concept of equity and the developed world is the protagonist if i may say there is this funny caption you can win you are either a winner or you are a loser and you must amass wealth so the lila ma was with us a few years back pre covid and we had a very packed hall and he was laughing as he usually does and he said you boys and girls must work very hard you must earn a lot of money because the hospitals will need it i think we've lost our perspective it's difficult to trace where it began from and where it to date thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you sir. thank you okay so who's next i request komal sharma to ask a question komal komal mishra good afternoon sir i'm komal mishra of 12th pcb i have a question that you have gone to iit i am one of the best institution what kind of preparation you did at intermediate level i'm so sorry komal i'm so sorry we never did any preparation we were so fortunate we were not caught up in this world of coaching classes we were not caught up in this world of if i say huge competition it was easy but my request to you if that is what you're looking at is iit is not the beginning and end of the world and again how we define success if you look at the global ceos and many of them are indians they didn't go to iits it does not matter go to a good institute go to where you have a good community of learners and work on your passion if you do what you like you will always be wanted you label is important in it ho jaye badi achhi baat hai nahi ho jaye koi baat nahi doesn't matter i have seen a lot of people from the nits recs private engineering colleges private management institutes when they're in their jobs just walking past the others so if you also look at discipline focus and do your best so sorry for the long response when i appeared for the iit exam and that was way before you were born i came back after my maths paper a very upset because i had responded to 14 questions out of 20 and i thought i won't get selected so my brother quizzed me said tere 12 sawal theek hai tere to admission ho gaya you are done it was that easy today the numbers are so large that your rank may be based only and only on a random number generated to the computer we don't have an option 
So if you see our cutoff is 218 out of 300, we have 10,000 students sitting on 218. And we have another 20. And if you give the exam on another day, your score could jump up by 20. Your score could do down by 20. So we know it's a fallacious exam. So I don't think you should get caught up in that. Padhai karo, haram se karo, focus karke karo, jo pasand usko karo, ho jayega, bhoat achhi baat hai, nahi to dunia padhi hui hai. Have I responded, Kumar? No, you're not satisfied? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Now, I would like to invite Ujjaisha Raj to put up her question. Good afternoon, sir. Sir, I am Ujjaisha Raj of Class 11 Humanities. So, my question for you is, do books have important role in your life? So, can you suggest us a few books that you would like us to read? Ujjaisha, I met a gentleman, R.P. Luther. And in our days, he was one of the doyens of management of India. If you go to Google and search for R.P. Luther, government of India had decided to shut down the Amudar Valley Corporation. It was in losses. And R.P. Luther was Secretary of Government of India. He offered, he says, give me a chance. I want to revive it. And he revived it. We were at a conference. And because of the name tag, I recognized him. And I namaste ki. He's, he asked me, I was a young lecturer at that time at IIT. Kya karte ho? I said, sir, class padhate hain. Padhate bhi ho? I said, haan, sir, padhate bhi hain. Is mahine kaun se kitab hai padhi hai? I said, sir, is mahine to nahi padhi, pichle mahine ek padhi thi. And then I got a little bugged, so I asked him over lunch, ki sir, aapne kitne kitab hai padhi hai? And he said, in the last 30 years, I have read, I have read 1560 books. I asked him, you keep a track of it? He says, no. Simple rule. Every Sunday, I start a new book. If it doesn't finish, next Sunday, I start another one. Sometimes I have three books running parallelly. And then he said, you know, Harish, sometimes I cheat. I said, sir, how do you do He said, I know this is a very hectic week. Time name will So I pick up something light like Jonathan Livingston Seagull, which 45 minutes in flight. So 30 years, 52 weeks, 52 into 30, 1560 books. Ujwesha, I am deeply convinced that books, reading books is a biochemical activity. It is the most satisfying activity. It cannot be compared to a film. It cannot be compared to reading on Kindle. You don't get the same feel while reading from, the, from Google or from the bookstore. It allows you to stop and think. Now, coming to the books that you should read, A, it's a function of the time that you have available. B, what are your interests in life? Which is difficult to know. But if you read a few, you will get it. If you like bestsellers, read bestsellers. If you write like uh, mysteries, read mysteries. My personal choice is uh, semi-classical. I am not very good at classical literature. I read semi-classical American British, Indian. So send me a mail, try a few books, and I'll recommend the rest. But don't follow anybody else. Follow your own passion. Your direction pasand hai, go for it. Our English teacher was, we had to read for 5 years James Hadley Chairs. So that's okay. Thank you, sir. Next question is by Chandita Sharma. Good afternoon, sir. I'm Chandita of Class 11 Humanities. Sir, I wanted to ask you that the government has bought an ambitious new education policy 2020. How can it be implemented in the present time? Uh, Chandita, let's leave this policy. And there are 13 subcommittees which you are working on defining how to implement it. It is a very ambitious policy. I referred to it slightly when I talked about critical thinking, creativity.
creativity, innovation, cooperation, communication. उसमें बहुत सारे इश्यूज हैं इसको इम्प्लीमेंट करने में काफी समय लगेगा बट आई थिंक द टेक अवे फॉर यू एज अ स्टूडेंट इज देखो सीबीएसई का करिकुलम ओवर नाइट चेंज नहीं होगा केमिस्ट्री में वही क्वेश्चन रहेंगे फिजिक्स में वही रहेंगे थोड़े बहुत आगे पीछे होंगे हॉट्स रहेंगे ये तो करना ही है बट कैन यू स्टार्ट एंगेजिंग एंड सींग विद इन द सिस्टम विद इन द सिलेबस एज ए सेड लर्निंग हैपन्स डीप लर्निंग हैपन्स ओनली बाई थिंकिंग एंड डूइंग इंस्टेड ऑफ डूइंग इट मैकेनिकस्टिक मैकेनिस्टिकली कैन यू स्टार्ट थिंकिंग ये डेरिवेशन क्यों है How is this equation derived? Its basis kya? When you say normal distribution, why is it normal? When you say Fibonacci series, why is it Fibonacci series? So I don't know what's your background. Are you more science or uh, humanities? Are you more so science I'm or humanities? humanities? You're from humanities. Yes, so sir. ask yourself, कि जो अफगानिस्तान में हुआ क्यों हुआ इसकी history क्या? जो मिडल ईस्ट में हो रहा है पिछले पचास साल में वहां साठ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट हो गई है उसकी हिस्ट्री क्या है जो इसराइल और पैलेस्टीन के बीच में हो रहा है उसकी हिस्ट्री क्या डोंट गो बैक इन टू टू थाउजेंड ईयर्स दैट्स ओके महाभारत हुई थी बहुत अच्छी जगह बात है महाभारत इट सेल्फ लेंड इट सेल्फ टू यूज एनालिसिस बट द मोमेंट यू स्टार्ट थिंकिंग अबाउट इट द मोमेंट यू स्टार्ट एनालाइजिंग इट यूल बी एबल टू डील विद अनस्ट्रक्चर्ड प्रॉब्लम the future will lie only for those who solve unstructured problems the rest will be computers so nep addresses it nep says many more things it would be a long session if i talk about nep now or mood ho to pad lo it is just 33 pages on school education if you want i'll send you my presentation on nep mujhe mail bhej do i'll send you the new gun browse through it in 20 minutes if you don't like reading 33 pages yes sir thank you sir now i would like to invite professor pradeep mukherjee to put forth his question good morning good afternoon sir i am smriti of class 12 pcb i would like to ask you a question how can we stop the world from pollution corruption and value erosion in our time smriti step 1 you decide not to indulge in it you decide i will not indulge in unethical practices step 2 begin at home the world will change it will slowly change and if you have built in activism into you nothing wrong with it but i am not sure whether within your social system within your family background within your career aspirations is activism the career for you so my simple comment is begin with yourself charity begins at just two principles sure go ahead please continue thank you sir now i invite himanshu to put forward this question hello good afternoon yes i am hello good afternoon sir and happy teachers day first of all to the every respected teachers present virtually or physically i want to i have a question that what kind of change you want to see in educational institution particularly in school education parth uh, if you have heard him can you repeat that because the voice got muffled 
himanshu your voice was cracking maybe a internet issue okay so sir, if pranayani would... parts were able to hear can you repeat that question i can repeat uh, try what and repeat kind of sense? Sense? yeah i think your voice is echoing are you sitting voice in an not audible ma'am yeah voice is echoing so please uh, see if you can go to a smaller place and ask your question in the meantime take some other question ma'am that will be better i call abhishek to put forth his question good afternoon sir my name is abhishek kumar of class 11th pcb and i want to ask a question that sir you talked about the scenario of future years hence what suggestion is to the student of today to prepare for that world work on base concepts and you will need to be a lifelong learner dekho i joined as a lecturer at iit in 1988 and i'm going to retire in 2024 35 years your generation will change at least 3 to 5 careers in your lifetime so you have to even when you are in college or in a job you will have to work out some time that you are learning new skills new technologies so there was this little girl asking about nep one huge emphasis for nep is from learning learning to learn we need to understand how does learning take place and you need to experiment with newer and newer areas so you can start your career from anywhere and you will find your waters but as you go along new technologies will come newer processes will come and you will have to keep pace with it uh i think himanshu can come in now thank you sir himanshu. Thank you. Uh, my question was is my question is what kind what kind of change you want to see in educational institution particularly in school education in India as I belong from Nepal. To mean there is no difference between India and Nepal. We are both part of the same if I may say ecosystem. governance notwithstanding i want to see an education which makes people happy i want to see an education which creates a peaceful world i want to see an education where people are willing to give and take and discuss and not fight i want to see an education where people could be proud of their friends colleagues achieving great heights and not feel jealous and i want to see an education where people work on technologies that would improve the world now technology is value neutral the gun has no values it can be used for peaceful purposes it can be used for disturbance it is the person behind the gun who has the values so i want to see people who have values and who are clear and say i will not take that which is not mine and i will not progress in life by stepping on somebody else's toes and i want to see an education which your school espouses very strongly where people compete with only themselves and nobody else have responded himanshu yes sir thank you sir and sorry for the inconvenience now i invite sanya podar to ask a question good morning sir uh, good morning. i want to ask i want to ask that we are not taught how to lose and we are not taught to do collective work and cooperate is there any scope for it in the new education policy 
Yes, Sanya, there's a lot of scope and a lot of effort. And I'll give you a simple instance. Of course, the policy can say whatever, but how we were taught how to work together. So we were a group of 10 at IIM Bangalore. And as it happened, the students given a project, some people do the work and some don't. So the teacher called us to present and the people she called us to present, including Harish Chaudhary, didn't know what the project was about and the group was given zero marks. Then this other colleague, co-student, co went to her and said, look, I did all the work and here is the material, now give me marks. And she said, no. The entire group will get the same marks. And she said, I'm not interested in how much you know about the subject. I'm interested in how you gel with the group. Teamwork. Sensing happiness and enjoyment. Letting others win. It's okay. Small wins. You know, when somebody comes first in the class, do the other children genuinely feel happy? And we learned it the hard way. So we used to insist that Shiv Lele, who is now a, a very famous professor of physics at University of Berkeley, we used to insist that he should attend the classes because we have to copy our notes from him and understand what to start. Sure. And can you be confident? Can you be confident that, okay, these are 10 things you are better than me for and I am better than you for the 11th and it's not a competition. That's your life and this is my life. Sunny, I'll leave you with a question, although it's probably your age is not for that question, but I'll still start. Who is it in the world with whom you are willing to exchange your life in totality? When we do this exercise, after a lot of discussion, the answer is no one. You are unique. Two, you are blessed. Sanya, can I ask you a question? Do you have a car at home? Do your parents own a car? Sanya, are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Can you please repeat the question? Do your parents own a car? Uh, yes, sir. It does not matter whether it's a Maruti L2 or whether it's a BMW. But if you own a car, look at the statistics and I'll give you the rationale for it. You belong to the top 2% of India. 98% of Indian families do not own a car. Look at the statistics, look at the data. What right do we have, we the top 2% of the country, to say, I want more? Hmm? We always look ahead of us and say, Hamse aage nikal gaye. Sometimes look at those who are behind you also. And it's good fun carrying people along. Think over it. Yes, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, I would like to invite Professor Tridhi Mukherjee to put forth his question. Maybe having the connectivity. Sure. I'll talk to you later. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, I would like to ask you a very simple question. Today is Teacher's Day, so I would like to know. Uh, I would like you. Uh, I would like to request you to tell our children 
uh, how would you define an ideal teacher? I was asked by Howard Gardner this question. He was doing a survey in 14 countries. Who's an excellent teacher? And then I did a survey at IIT Delhi. Who do children believe to the best teachers? So we did a study with a large sample of the first year BTEC students, about 300 of them. And we gave them 10 options. An excellent teacher should be or is, knows his subject, has good communication skills, is disciplined, prepares for the class. And the largest number of students gave me the 11th option, which was any other, and I didn't know. And the 11th option was one who listens to us. An excellent teacher is one who listens to the children. You see, you cannot... You can inform a child what is Archimedes' law, but you can't sink it into the child unless you allow the child to question it, to disagree with it, to debate it. You need to understand if this child is not responding or not understanding, what is the issue? So simplistically, a good teacher is one who loves the children. A good teacher is who listens to the children. A good teacher who learns along with the children. Yes. A good teacher is willing to change as the children want. A good teacher is a friend. Have I responded to the episode or should yes. I expand? Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So there's a minor joke. Let's also be a little humorous. So the mother asked the child, Tumari class me kon kon pass ho She said, everybody's been promoted except the teacher. <laughs> yes. Okay. So should we stop here for the day or? Uh, I think Bart and Pranani, is there any more question? Yeah, yeah, Are more. there any? Ma'am, there, there is, is one, one parent, question. one parent wishes to ask. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. We must take it. Mrs. Ranjita, the yes, Shri's mother class said, Hanji, please, please put oh. here. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for happy teachers ke liye. thank you sabhi teachers to happy teachers aur mera ek sawal hai sir hello sir uh, yeah. i as a mother vishwaji class 8 i want to ask you that how we can overcome the stress level of students after covid let them play okay sir let them play and with due respect, कहीं दुनिया नहीं भागी जा रही है। यही Let them enjoy. And of course, with a reasonable level of discipline. Okay, sir. That's about it. रोकिए नहीं। नहीं सर रोकते तो नहीं है हम मेरे ऐसा लगता है ना फीलिंग होता है मैं मैं भी स्ट्रेस नहीं लेती हूं मैं कहता जो है कर लेगा लेकिन बच्चों का होता है कि दो साल हम स्कूल ले गए वैसे टीचर ने भी काफी मेहनत किया ऑनलाइन में मैं बहुत खुश हूं सीएसकेएम के टीचर से सेटिस्फाइड हूं कि इन्होंने इतना मेहनत किया इन बच्चों के ऊपर ऐसे फीलिंग कभी नहीं दिलाया कि हम लोग है ना घर पे हैं बच्चे घर पे पढ़ रहे हैं बिल्कुल स्कूल वाली फीलिंग और मैं तो फुली सेटिस्फाइड हूं स्कूल के और टीचर से भी काफी मेहनत किया इन लोगों ने फिर भी थोड़ा सा हो जाता है कि नहीं दौरा बच्चे स्कूल ले गए थोड़ा कुछ स्ट्रेस स्ट्रेस कम लेकिन खैर आपने जैसा बोला मैं आपके आपके बातों को मैं फॉलो कर रही सर मैम कुछ नहीं फर्क पड़ने वाला वी विल लुक बैक एट दिस टाइम 
as a very special time when we got time to spend with our children okay. when the nature performed better when grass grew a lot better in the forests and highways okay. where some people and if i may say a lot of people developed a lot of sympathy and empathy when they saw the tragedies around them so i think we'll come out as a better world or going back into history in 1974 jayaprakash narayan asked the bihar college students to leave mm-hmm. colleges for one year and revolt which resulted in a government change and he said ek saal to kuch nahi hone wala hai desh ko badalna hai kitna badla alag baat hai and that movement threw up a very large number of leaders so don't worry man आप सोचिए भी मत इसको कुछ नहीं फर्क पड़ता सेकंड लोग सर्मोडायनेमिक्स रटा हुआ नहीं है डजंट मैटर और जैसा शायद आपको ने तो पिछले साल जब ऑनलाइन प्रक्रिया शुरू हुई थी पढ़ाने की तब आ, कहा था कि बच्चों से सारे घर के काम कराइए लेट देम लर्न लेट देम बी पार्ट ऑफ द होम लेट देम ऑन द यू नो I mean, not as a child labor, but as a part of the family. So I think ये अगर बच्चे करना सीखते हैं तो एक बहुत responsible quality बच्चों में develop होती है जब वो वापस school आते हैं they catch up very quickly. Thank you for your question, Ranjita ji. due to the pandemic the education system had to be shifted online the school and teaching fraternity have put in immense efforts in recognition of teachers human contribution with efficacy during the online covid period we will now honor those who despite all odds rose to the occasion and ensured that students continue to learn joyfully appreciation goes a long way in boosting morale and doubling the effort no doubt teachers do the same motivating us to strive smarter all along with the blessings of our chief guest speaker professor harish choudhury we now share with you the recognition awarded to teachers for their outstanding efforts for online teaching during the covid-19 pandemic now i invite mr g p padhya sir to announce the teachers awards good afternoon one and all present here after having heard the words of wisdom from such a great scholar we as teachers have also taught our children sir how to deal with the situation which is not under their control this is one of the life skills to deal with the situation which are presented by them presented before them so teaching them how to be tough in the present circumstances is one of our also strategies because we all know that the tough situations they do not last long but tougher people ultimately do last long and it has been a great saying that when the going gets tough the tougher gets going there is no denying the fact that there has been no substitute to the physical mode of classes but once we were enforced to captivate our children in a small room to put them in a small closed door house where no option was there but to sit them and remain glued to the electronic media as a tool of teaching learning methodology or process we had no option so cskm as a school is also no exception to it we have all heard known seen that this pandemic 19 has had a very detrimental effect on the teaching learning process especially in the areas which are far flung which are house houses which are not so well connected to internet facilities but despite all the odds we as teachers under the able guidance of our principal ma'am and the dynamic stewardship of the school management rose to the occasion 
embraced the challenge wholeheartedly and took this crisis try to transform this crisis into a welcome opportunity the world has changed we also as teachers have to change our students have changed a lot and the teacher made such a smooth swift and efficient transition to the digital and the online mode of learning it was all possible due to the indomitable will determined effort persistent perseverance and the constant approach and more importantly never said die spirit this was the spirit because of which the students the teacher the community learning community as a whole tirelessly with full tenacity tried to learn the new innovative methods of learning in order to recognize the contribution made by the teachers on a sustained continuous and regular basis it is now the time to honor them and there would not have been an occasion more befitting than today to receive the award from the hands of a scholar and the august gatherings like you all present here so with this i will cut down the teachers award from the sub junior section we have two teachers who received the award and it is again i'll mention here that this award has been based on the online survey which our school conducted from the parents from the other stakeholders also there was a cut throat competition but awards as they mean they have to be limited so from the sub junior section the winner of the teachers award ms ruchi sinha please ms ruchi sinha from the sub junior section from the sub junior section the runner up award go goes to ms charu sinha ms charu sinha from the junior middle section the winners award goes to ms susma yadav ms susma yadav the winner from the junior middle section sub award goes to miss malti ojha miss malti ojha from the junior middle section gets the runner sub award from the middle section the winners award goes to mathematics teacher mr neeraj kumar mr neeraj kumar the runner up award from the middle section goes to another mathematics teacher miss vandana singh miss vandana singh from the secondary section the winners award goes to our hindi head of department ms prem lata kohli ms prem lata kohli from the secondary section itself the runners up award goes to Deputy Head of the Humanities, Mr. Sachidanand Kumar. Mr. Sachidanand Kumar. Mr. 
Mr. Sachidanand Kumar, runners up from the secondary section. From the senior secondary section, the winner's award goes to the head of department of humanities, Mr. Naveen Chandra Jha. Mr. Naveen Chandra Jha. And finally, from the senior secondary section itself, the runners up award goes to the English head of department English, Miss Madhumita Nag Pathak. Miss Madhumita Nag Pathak, HOD English. Thank you all very much. May I now request Madam Principal to kindly announce the name of some of the special awardees. Uh, uh, begin with Mr. Ajay Rati, our IT head. Ajay, can you please uh, pin your video? Yeah, thank you so much, ma'am. Ah, dear, congratulations, Ajay. None of this would have been possible without you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. For all your support to the entire team. And then, of course, the vice principals, Mr. R.K. Tyagi, Mr. S.K. Thakur, the coordinators, Mr. J.P. Padhyay, Mr. Uh, Ashutosh Kumar, uh, the coordinator, Ms. Sutin Bala, the headmistress, Ms. Deepika Abrol, and last but not the least, very importantly, Ms. Jatinda Taneja, the coordinator of the sub juniors. Pleasure to have you all in the team. Love you all. Thank you. I request Honorable Chairman Sir, Dr. Rohit Chairman, to present full mementos as a token of our love, affection, and gratitude to Dr. Harish Chaudhary for his gracious presence and inspiring words today on this very significant Teachers' Day. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, I am Dr. Rohit. I am a psychiatrist by profession, but I am the chairman by destiny here. Uh, it was extremely nice to hear you today. I am in there are a lot of times I say people that your thought was awe-inspiring or thought-provoking, but I would say that your talk was profound. And uh, it is very rarely that we get to hear these kind of thoughts in today's times, though I belong to the same era as you in terms of education. And I completely agree with what you say and I am so happy that the children could listen to you. And more than the children, I, I, am saying, I would say that the teachers who listen to you, because it may be little too much for the children to grasp the gravity of what you have said. But I think the teachers should understand that it is so, so important what you have told us today. Second thing which I would like to say is that I would like your thoughts to reach to a wider audience and it will be very nice if you could please uh, make some videos or, you know, uh, I, I know you are very fond of books and so, so am I, but uh, in today's world, the attention span of, of people is getting shorter and videos make a bigger impact on children and adults than the books. So if you can do that, I'm mean, just my humble request or my opinion that the thoughts which you have expressed should definitely reach out, reach to a much, much wider audience. And uh, if you can do that, I think it will benefit the entire India and maybe the world. Uh, I am indeed grateful to you for sparing so much of time. Uh, we took a lot of your time and on a Sunday 
I, I and I wish that uh, we have an opportunity to, to listen to you again. I'll just present to you this a small memento from the school side a gratitude for uh, coming and addressing us, sir. Thank you so much. <clears throat> and Thank you so much. Uh, we have something which uh, you must have seen from Karun Satsangi times mm -hmm. that we give a clock because he used to say that clock doesn't stop working. It works around the clock. So his mm -hmm. moment he used to, I mean, his motto used to be to work all the time with, with joy, with happiness. And lastly, we'll be sending to you the literature of the school, the, all the literature uh, of the philosophy and the uh, the things about the school, latest the things about the school. We will be coming over and, and giving it to you. Thanks for sparing your time, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. For now. Conclude, we shall have the school song. I request everyone to please sit up. of the chief guest speaker we will bring the meeting to an end thank you